Hey guys, welcome back to Ironside Ranch. So I apologize if the phone's a little bit shaky. I gotta hold it here because my mount's in the other vehicle. So uh, <laughs> let's talk about the FTC and the Federal Trade Commission and this whole rule that they're making or that they're trying to enforce on uh, removing non-compete clauses from workers' contracts. Okay, so what this would do is this would go back and it would remove uh, any non-compete clauses that are currently in your contracts, and then it would prohibit you from uh, uh, obviously adding non-compete clauses in your contracts or, uh, that uh, that you'd be making in the future. Now, here's a couple problems with this. The, the the argument for it is they say, well, this allows workers to freely transition from one job to another job. And uh, so if they're not happy with their benefits or their wages or whatever, they're no longer locked in here. And so um, that makes sense to a certain extent, but here's the problem with it. The employers that do this generally are employers that are providing a substantial amount of training. So I want you to think about a plumber, for example. So a plumbing company hires a plumbing apprentice. This this apprentice has uh, very little plumbing skill or none at all. And they train them and they spend the next two, three, four, five years, whatever it is, uh, making this plumber a uh, first to a, uh, you know, a plumbing apprentice and then to a journeyman and then to a master plumber at some point in time. And uh, they spend a substantial amount of time and energy uh, developing and training this person. And then another company comes along and basically steals that person over because there's no non-compete clause. And that person then, uh, they go over to this other company and this other company gets to enjoy the benefits of the first company, company A, of all the money that they have uh, sunk into this person training them. And then so person, you know, the, 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 the argument for the FTC's reasoning on this says, well, the first company should pay them more. Well, the first company already sank a fortune into training and development of this person. So that person has already paid them. They're just not realizing that in their, in, or in their, uh, uh, yearly tax forms, but they're still getting paid. They got paid in the form of training and experience that is, um, this other company now is going to be able to take advantage of. And so the other company, uh, you can actually make a business that you're just poaching on other people's businesses, right? Poaching on other people's employees by offering them a little bit more and not building in training or uh, de uh, development of your, um, of your employees into this model. And so this is a really, really harsh thing to hit businesses with. The other thing is that it is a direct block in the form of free trade and free labor. And what I mean by that is that you, when you signed that employment contract, you agreed to the non-compete clause. You agreed, said, hey, you train me to do this and I will not work for anybody else in your area. I will not take your customers and your clients. Now, this means that any of our employees that we have spent years training, that they have benefited because they're on commission, they have benefited from our company marketing, they have made uh, um, relationships and built relationships with people with referral partners, they could all of a sudden take those people over and start their own business competing with us and even though we developed all that into them. So what does that mean for us? Well, it changes the way that we would have to do business. We would no longer uh, be able to have people on commission, which means that you would only be on salary uh, because I can't have you going out uh, generating leads and generating income um, only to be able to take those people with you in the future because I provide a lot of the support and a lot of the finances to create those leads. Even though they'd go out and they do the work, I make I, I bring the leads. And so it means that I would have to move you onto salary where you're not taking those with you and uh, and you have some sense of uh, job security because you're no longer on commission so it provides some advantage to you doing that the problem with that is that sounds all well and good hey why wouldn't you do that the problem with that is I can't hire as many people so there's less uh, less roles and then salary people as a general rule uh, are not quite as hungry even even really good workers and really hard workers I'm not saying salary people are lazy by any means but salary people just are not as hungry as people that are on commission people that are on commission work Saturdays and Sundays they don't ever feel like they don't have or you know that's that's something they have to do, right? Real estate agents are a great example. Real estate agents are showing houses on Saturdays and Sundays. Now they, 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 they get to choose when they work and that's always very nice for commission. And those people that would no longer be on commission under a company like mine, they would then be on salary, which means they no longer choose when they work. They're on Monday through Friday and uh, or Monday through, or Tuesday through Saturday or whatever I set them up as, uh, but they're on salary then at that point in time. And so, and then salaries will go up with inflation, uh, but they can make a lot more money on commission than they can on salary. So uh, it changes the way that we have to run the business and we would have to change the way uh, that we operate our training. It means that I would have to provide a second benefit. So let's say 
um, there's life insurance options, right? So there's a life insurance option where I could say, if you work for the company for 10 years, you will get this $100,000 life insurance payout, basically, uh, that you then get to take over. It's, there, there's weird life insurance rules with, with running a business and, uh, uh, and the way the taxes work around all that. But uh, there is a way, basically, to do that. And it, like I said, it's funneled through life insurance. But uh, basically, they get this big check after like 10 years, and I fund, the, I fund that thing over 10 years, and then they get to take it with them. If they leave at uh, nine years and 364 days, then they don't take it with them. But after that, they can take it and, and go forward and do whatever they want to do. And I have to offer incentives like that, right? Now, that $100,000 stops me from putting that money somewhere else. It's not like I would take that $100,000 and just put it in my pocket. We would be using that for business development. We would be using that to uh, expand services and hire other employees. And so that $100,000 is no longer something to, that's there. So it changes it that I have to have another benefits package on top that I can no longer... Um, I can no longer use that money to do things that I had intended to do in the first place. And now I have to change what I'm spending my money on. So money A, B, C, and D can no longer be used for money A, B, C, and D because I have to pull a little bit from each of them to add to this line item E, right? So uh, that's 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 part of the issue that we run into. So it slows business development. Anytime the, the government gets in the way and sets um, barriers in place, it slows the business development. So I want you guys to consider that. And uh, I know that this video will probably infuriate a lot of people. Whoa, sorry about the, about the camera. Sorry, my arm's getting tired. I know that this video will uh, infuriate a lot of people. It tends to do that, um, and uh, that's okay. You can disagree with me. Uh, this is not about being against the worker and only helping the greedy rich. This is a small business thing. Walmart doesn't care if you have a non-compete clause. Amazon doesn't care if you have a non-compete clause. That doesn't mean much to them at all. What the, the, the ones that this is hurting, this is hurting the small businesses. This is hurting the plumbing shop down the corner from you. This is hurting the electricians, the home inspectors, uh, the trade industries, right? Welders, people that pay for you to get trained to have that skill. Uh, that, that, this is who that hurts. If you, um, and, and by the way, that non complete clause is not federally mandated, meaning that my, my, my guys, right? Our, our employees, they can go start a competing company. They can go join any other company as long as it's not in the footprint of our business. And so they're not tied in to just working for our business for like the rest of their life. They can, they, the, the, the only thing that that ties them in from doing is taking our clients and our, uh, our customers with them and, uh, going to taking them to a competitor and, um, and, and not taking a, a working book of business, taking our, our practices and all the training that we have paid for with them, not taking that with them. So, uh, that's what that protects us from. Y'all, my arm is getting tired. I miss having my mount. Um, that makes this a lot easier. This car doesn't have the mount on there. Um, anyways, so guys, this is this, this is a very, very bad thing for small businesses. It's gonna make things a lot harder and will change the nature of how things work. You agreed to that non-compete clause when you got the training and you were perfectly fine with it. And now you're reneging saying, hey, we want the government to step in because I don't wanna have to keep working for this company because I'm not willing to move and I should be able to go out and do what I want now that they've spent hundred thousand dollars training me it's a load of crap you agreed to it and it's the same thing with the student debt thing the student th debt thing is very easy to solve you signed up for a debt pay it back into the discussion right so why are you having somebody else pay it back that didn't sign up for your debt and never benefited from it so it's a load of, it's a load of crap guys all right, I'm gonna let y'all go. Um, I just wanted to uh, address that with you. I will post the link to this article down in the description from, I believe this one was from Breitbart, uh, but we'll get this posted for you. Thanks guys.